Golf 8.5 with LPGA Hall of Fame instructor Kay McMahon. This is Golf Smarter. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Kay. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great. that You're, you're well experienced with the ING Conference. Well, this is my second year, but the first year was great fun. Um, I found ING by going up the wrong escalator and <laughs> stumbling into the wrong room at the PGA <laughs> conference at uh, at the PGA show. But it was it's been a great experience. ING is just a fabulous organization, and the people are so friendly, and obviously the connections are even better. Awesome, awesome. Tell me about. 8.5, your teaching method 8.5. I find it really interesting. Well, I've been teaching for a number of years. My background is in education, and um, I just think things need to be simpler. Um, the golf industry seems to be sending out the message that golf is hard and uh, by a number of different things. And why would people really want to play if something is really hard? And it really still is a game, and it really still is about play. So I've studied the golf swing. I studied everyone's methods. I've uh, studied laws, principles, and preferences. And in my teaching, I realized that we had to make it simpler. That the like great, the great doctors, you know, the, if they use all this fancy terminology, or a lawyer uses all the fancy terminology, we don't get it. So if people kept coming to me with the one thousand and one things they were in their head that they're supposed to do in one point two seconds. And everybody comes that way. So I broke it down into um, f four things to b before the swing and only four and a half things in the swing. And if I do that, all the things that everybody talks about happens. It, it just naturally happens. And you don't have to have that many things to think about. So people come to me and they go, well, that's too simple. And I go, well, I can make it complicated. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Everybody else seems to. Everybody else seems to. And I feel like... The traditional way that we teach it is like little post-it notes. You give somebody a little tip, and then they throw it up against the wall, and then you give them another little post-it note, and maybe a different color, and they throw it up against the wall. So pretty soon they have all these little post-it notes, and then they go out and play, and they pull one of the post-it notes off the wall, and then that doesn't work, and the ball still goes in the woods. So we teach it from a point of understanding why the ball's going in the woods, why it's not You're not going guaranteeing the ball won't go in the woods. <laughs> Pretty much so, but now I, I'm going to I'm going to say that no one ever gets worse. Uh, they may stay the same, but they at least understand why it goes in the woods. Ah, that's a huge part of it. Right. I think understanding that. Right, and so if you teach it from a point of understanding rather than people just saying do something, then the ball still goes in the woods. It doesn't make any sense. And so, one of the gentlemen that makes great testimonial, he about a 23 handicap. He said. I used to when I hit a bad shot, then I continued to have a bad round. Now, now I only have a bad hole because mm. he, he knows what to do to change it. He said it may not always be perfect, but I now know what to do. So it gives him a point of, again, I go right back to the understanding the concepts of the golf swing. And I do think that the swing is simple. We way over teach it. The game may be difficult in the fact that we've got wind, we've got uphill, side hill lies, you've got other people you're playing with. You've got different conditions, but the golf swing is simple. Mm -hmm. It's not that complicated at all. Really? But really. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, today with the internet videos, one, you know, the little segments of one and a half minute tips, we get um, technology, you know, that your 2% of your weight has to be in your right toenail and 3% has to be in your left foot. And, you know, it, it gets so complicated that we've gained, let's say, 2 million golfers, but we lost 2.5 million. So what's that experience about? But so that has nothing to do with everything that's on the Internet, does it? Well, everybody in the industry is talking about making the hole bigger, doing this differently, and no one is really talking about how we teach the game. And I think that we need to, as the millenniums will talk about, it's fine the way we've been teaching, but we need to disrupt teaching. We need yeah. to make it simpler. We, I want to disrupt traditional teaching, and that's what Golf 8.5 is all about. Do you have any sense of how many people who play golf actually take lessons? No, mm. I don't really have the percentages. Yeah, but I, 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 I saw a National Golf Foundation said that, I saw a stat that said 80% would like to improve their game, about 23% take lessons. And the, the, the tendency is that p the thought process is that if I take a lesson, I'm going to get worse. I guarantee people it won't get worse. Because why they get worse is so, so many lessons put more th swing thoughts in their head. Now, they've already got enough in their head, and then they add a few more, and it doesn't really 
doesn't really help them. So then they stop, they stop doing it. And they, and they have the same things that happen. So we talk about decluttering the six inch attic. Um, <laughs> it's really where yeah. it all where it all happens, yeah. and um, we have had a very high success rate in doing that. And probably where you know you're probably going to ask the question of how I came up with golf eight point five. So I'll write that down. Okay, so, so you sure have a I question. How did you <laughs> I'm helping you out here. Yeah. <laughs> prompt me. This is good. But well, it it actually. Um, oh, am I supposed to ask that now? No, that's all right. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. But Kay, how did it, how, how did you come up with eight point five? <laughs> I was doing a workshop a long time ago for a bunch of PGA professionals, and I set up like the traditional person would set up in the golf course. I call it the penguin walk. They walk up with these two feet and they kind of shuffle and then they try to figure out how far they're supposed to stand from the ball. And then they put their feet down and then they hang onto the club and then they set up with their arms straight and their shoulders are up and they're all, you know, in this unusual position to try to hit a golf ball. And they do hit a golf and ball. And make sure that your shoulders uh, go up on, above your ears. Correct. Right? Like this. Right? And then and then they tell you, oh, then, and then they go, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to relax. Yeah. Or I'm supposed to stick my bottom out or I'm supposed to bend my knees more or all this stuff. So in this workshop, I, uh, the six guys got up and uh, they told me, um, each of them told me two to three things that I had to do just before I could swing. So that's 12 to 18 things already. And these are teaching professionals. These are teaching professionals, right. Mm. And so then I asked them each to set up. And what I was professing is what I call the four things before the swing, is my, what I call G-cap. You first grip it in the air. Okay. You set the club grip. head on the ground. That's the C, G-cap, okay. which is you're aiming the club head. Uh, you then align your feet, and then you get into your posture position. So traditionally, posture is taught first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the whole PGA thing, posture grip, posture grip alignment. Well, during this workshop, okay, I've been teaching for 30 years. That's the first time I heard that, but that's how it's taught. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. So um, I asked them each to set up, and they each put the club up in the air, hung onto it with their grip, set the club head on the ground, aligned their feet, and they were ready to go. Took one look at the target, and we're ready to go. Hmm. So I said, well, why don't we teach it the way we do it? And they said, because nobody's going to get it. And so today we don't teach you posture. It happens automatically. Mm. I never teach posture, and to change someone's swing, and or to change their pre their setup positions, I don't tell them how to do it. I just change the order of how they do it. Oh, okay. So if you do something in the right order, each thing is reliant on the next. So I first pick the club up in the air, and we describe how the club should work. With the leading edge has to be perpendicular, and so we put a little arrow on the club okay okay so, so that now we're looking I, 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 if you're listening to this and you're not able oh, to watch right. but we do have this on our youtube channel <laughs> but the arrow is pointing at the toe toe of the club toe face. of the club face so it's parallel to the leading edge mm -hmm. so the leading edge has to be perpendicular to the ground if the leading edge is pointed to the right that's where the ball goes that's to the right leading edge is straight up that hits a straight golf ball leading edge goes to the left that hits it to the left okay so you and you said you're holding it. It's straight out in front of straight you. Straight out in front of you. Can I can you. straight out in front of you. Yeah, we can see that. There you go. So it's straight out in front of you. So the leading edge is up, left, right. So whatever your hands do, that operates mm -hmm. the club head. So they get that right off the bat, and then that balances the club. Okay. Okay. So then they set the club head on the ground with the leading edge perpendicular to their target line, and then you align your feet to the club head. So the club tells you where to stand, whether it's a putter, an iron, a hybrid, or a wood. So you're doing the same thing from your putter all the way to your driver. But the club tells you where to stand. And that automatically puts people in their automatic posture position. And they don't have to do anything with posture. We don't teach posture. It, it just happens. It happens. It happens. People come back and say, well, where's the ball position? I say, set the club down as it's designed, and the club will tell you where to stand. Oh, I see. Well, that makes sense. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> you're good. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly the reaction we get. Well, that's too logical. Yeah. And they don't have to think about as many things. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because the club will tell you where to stand. It'll tell you not it's a yardstick. Because if someone gives you a typical answer of, well, that you should stand so far from the ball, you can't do that. You have 14 different clubs, and everybody has a different arm length. So how can I give you a standard answer? Sure. I can't. Right. 
But if you set the club down, that's your yardstick as it's designed, it'll tell you right where to stand and right where the ball position should be. So you've just eliminated a whole bunch of stuff that you don't have to teach. <sighs> want to go play? Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I want, I want you to work with me on this. Um, but, you know, teaching, uh, teaching professionals, they're in the business to teach. They can't give their students the final answer because then they won't come back and they're out of business. So, you know, what you, you've created here, and, you know, you said you're in education. You, you come from an education background, and that's probably why you're in the Hall of Fame. Is I'm in true? the Hall of Fame. That's very true. The LPGA Hall of Fame. LPGA Hall of Fame in teaching and club pros section. Correct. That's exactly correct. Well, congratulations. Thank that's you very much. Awesome. All right, so you've got your credentials. So, um, but... You know, you, you've come up with this thing that's going to put teaching pros out of business. It's actually going to create more business. It really is. Um, I tell my students, my, my objective is to make it simple, and this is not really true, to get rid of them. <laughs> 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 because if you really think about it, if they, the idea is to get them on the golf course to be successful. I want to get them out there as fast as I can. And, and I can get somebody to hit a golf ball in 10 to 15 minutes and have a classic-looking swing, and they then know what to do. Now, what happens with golfers, as you well know, is no matter who you are, you want to get better. So they do come back, mm -hmm. and they want to get better. And now they want to know the finer details and how to play, and then uphill, downhill, side hill lies, and then we've got putting, and then we've got chipping, and then we've got course strategy. and then. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn, and there's a whole bunch of people out there. The <laughs> First, you got to learn how to you got to learn how to get the golf ball in the air, yeah. and people do come back, but people go on, and then what it really creates is good word of mouth. I had a successful lesson. I can tell you what I learned, and oftentimes I get people that come to me that have taken some other lessons, and this is nothing against a profession. It's just that I think we really need to take a look at how we teach it. Let's get them on the golf course. I don't want them coming back. If they're coming back, I'm doing something wrong, and I better mm. figure it out if that makes any sense. And there's a whole bunch of people out there. There's a big market out there, and there's enough for every golf professional. Well, let's break down. Can we break down the 8.5? You know, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time here because we're at this conference, and, and we snuck you in 15 minutes early so I can get an extra couple minutes with you. Um, and I really hope I can get you back on the show so we can go into it. I would love to. I would in, love in to. greater detail. But can we break down what the 8.5 is? And while I was reading your material what really fascinated me about it is doing it really slowly to learn how to do it. But let's break it down, what that exactly means, and if you need to stand up. Or <laughs> no, I'm good. I can, okay. I can probably do it sitting in the chair. Yeah. The chair actually works pretty good because it swivels. <laughs> but um, Good hip turn, by We learn, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. It, it, especially the older we get, the less we turn. Yeah, exactly. But um, we learn things in chunks. If you go back to when we learned the ABCs, Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody gets A, B, C, D, E, F, and then we all kind of get mixed up in the middle because the teachers went Elemental faster. Elemental P. Elemental P. Sounds <laughs> like a word. See, everybody does the same thing. And then they went slower at the end. Right. Okay, the slower you do something, the faster you retain it and learn. Interesting. Because, you be, because everyone says, well, I don't want to think. And I'm like, no, 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 you want to think because this is a very important statement. The more you become aware of what you're doing is the only way to get to unaware. It's the only way to get to the, into the zone. And people want, don't want to think. So the more aware I am of what I'm doing, the more unaware I can become. Mm. It's pretty profound if you really, you know. So it's deep. It's, well, it is deep, but it's yeah. like uh, you don't want to be, okay, I'm I want to know sarcastic. what I'm doing. I no, <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's deep, and people really get it. And so I say, okay, for the next two weeks, you're going to think. And then pretty soon it becomes automatic. And that's why when we do the four things before the swing, the GCAP, Every time you do this automatically, you're building your pre-shot routine. Every time you practice, it's G-C-A-P, and they get into a routine. That's done. Then you checklist for the four and a half things in the swing. Um, everyone has to take the club away. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you'll appreciate that. You'll get a laugh out of this. So I tell my little kids my name is K, so I show my letter K, like with my leg. Mm -hmm. And then when you get set up, your legs look like the letter A. And then when we get set up with my arms in the shaft, it looks like the letter Y. See, so it's all about K. Okay. <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> there you got it. Okay. <laughs> so actually, when you get set up, your arms in the shaft look like the letter Y. Okay. I see. Yeah, your the, arms the, and then the, the shaft. The shaft look yep. like the letter Y. Yep. The arrow of the club or the, the uh, leading edge is pointing up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you take it away, that's always the club head's always in the center of my chest. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so if I turn my chest 90 degrees in my swivel chair here, that clubhead will always stay within the width of my chest and I will still have a Y. My arms will be the same length. One arm isn't going to be any longer or shorter than the other. So it's not about keeping the forward or the left arm straight. So once I take it away, I turn 90 degrees my shoulder line to my target line. That's the first Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I get to the, I'm getting ahead of myself, but when I come through, I have another Y coming through. You finish, okay. Okay, on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that would be a half a swing. So it's Y to Y. Mm -hmm. Okay. The finish of the swing is I, and once I get my extension and both arms have the Y, I then bend both elbows and I have two L's. Mm -hmm. So the club head is the toe is up, the ball will go straight. So the club head comes back with both elbows bending and the toe goes down. Okay. That's the finish of the swing. The yeah. club head is always staying within the width of my body. But you got it, You said you got ahead of yourself by going over here. So we because were I, the, the way y. I teach it is you first do Y to Y, and then oh, we teach the finish. Okay. So okay, I'll go to I'll go to the, all the steps. So once I have a Y and I turn back, the arrow's up. It's mm -hmm. still in the center of my chest. I have ninety degrees. I bend my back arm, and I have another L. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another L. Yep. Okay. T toe goes down. So the back arm is more important than the forward arm because that's your power source. So for basketball players, that's how you'd play basketball. You face the target, you bend your arm, and then you bend your arm and you're creating a lever. Right. Now, this position here with your right arm being a right-handed golfer, your right arm being in the L position Correct. with your hand pointing up here, um, this is, some may refer to this or some comment on the chicken wing or the elbow being away from the body, you know, where a lot of teachers want to, so you can get some draw on it. Okay. If going back to G cap, uh -huh. each part is reliant on the next. So the four and a half things in the swing that if everyone tells you to turn in the swing going back, but nobody tells you when, okay, uh, or how much. I love this. Okay. <laughs> so the when is by the time the club reaches approximately hip height in your takeaway, your shoulder line will be 90 degrees turned. That's the typical thing. People talk about that as connections. Now my arms are still in front of my chest because my chest is turned. Mm -hmm. If I take the club away without turning my chest, I will always have a chicken wing. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you first turn with your arms still in front of you, you can, and the drill we do is you take a, um, a tray or a uh, clipboard, mm -hmm. put a glass of water on top of it, okay, and you turn 90 degrees. Oh. Oh, way cool, huh? Light went off. Yeah, okay. Okay. Then the top of the backswing is what you're creating is a lever system, which quadruples your strength. Then therefore, you don't have to worry about that because your arm is already in line with your chest. Okay. You don't have to fix anything. There's nothing to fix. But if you don't get the first turn correct, you're always going to have the chicken wing. Mm -hmm. So therefore, then when you get to the top of your backswing, is many people let go of the club that's a loss of your power, but that's because the right forearm, the back forearm, is not underneath the club. It has to be perpendicular to the ground. Mm. So then when you're coming down, because the back arm looks like a box, mm -hmm. okay, elevators are boxes. So elevators have gone up. Elevators are coming down. That's your two and a half. That's 2.5. Uh, That's your transition. Uh, the technical term is you're retaining the angle. When you come down like this, you're also staying on plane, okay, as opposed to I do not. This is very important. Your hips... Do not turn first. Your hips do not turn first. If you turn your hips, the average everyday golfer, how many golfers are out there, come over the top of the swing plane, slice the ball, end up with a chicken wing on the other side. The golf swing does not start with the hips. The golf swing starts with your hand. Mm. So you re that's the two and a half comes down, down. Then my signature thing is there's no such thing as weight transfer no such thing there's no such thing as your hips turn first <laughs> we're disrupting you totally I'm, yeah brains are scrambled right now okay I so my signature thing is if i have a nylon on tights to the millennials the nylons are not <laughs> okay <laughs> and i had a run in the back of my right nylon okay as my as i came forward i would then turn and take a look at it my right knee would then bend. So it's the leg that moves my body, not my body moves my leg. Think of how we walk. We move our feet to move our bodies. We don't move our body to move our feet. Wow. So a pitcher on a mound, 
He's got his foot on the rubber. Mm -hmm. He's not turning his hips first because he'd be throwing. He's actually pushing off with that right leg. Yep. It's the same thing. It's the same um, kinesiology, physics of the bo of the body and how it actually works. Now I will say this: you get turned, but you're not trying to turn. You, because the leg turns my lower half, and as my arms pass my body, that turns my upper half. I get turned, but I'm not trying to turn. Okay. You get it, don't you? I, I you know what? I, I do. I really like it. And um, you gave a little clinic yesterday, didn't you? Yes. And I was still on the plane. Um, well, We're going to do another one tomorrow. Okay. Because I want to see this, and I'm going to bring the camera out for that, too. Uh, tell everybody uh, who's listening, um, and it may be one person. You know what? Listening to you, I think you get a lot of followers. Well, no, but people listen by themselves. So it is one person. Oh, I got it. <laughs> That's so, good. Yeah, they don't listen in groups. They watch movies in groups, but they don't <laughs> listen in groups. Um, but tell people where they can uh, find you and, and find about more about this. We have um, the website is Education Golf, which is E D U K A Y. T-I-O-N-G-O-L-F dot com. There's an also, uh, we have a second website called Golf 8.5, but you have to spell the point out. So it's Golf 8, P the number, -I -N -T and T5, number five dot com. Dot com okay. And we are located in uh, uh, Lenox, Massachusetts, which is opposite from Boston, mm -hmm. but we are doing things nationally, and so we're doing golf schools and uh, workshops all over the place. And you're looking primarily to do workshops for instructors? We are primarily looking to... Or do you classes for Classes for students. students. I have in my classes and my workshops, we have everyone from a scratch handicap to a beginning golfer. Um, because everyone, it's the same principles. Everyone has a different body sizes or whatever. So some of the principles of how we teach it, not everybody can do everything. So we do some of it. We adapt to the person. But it's not just limited to beginners. I've got a uh, young lady who's 17, going to play in her second professional golf tournament. She wow. hits the ball 270 yards, and she oh, probably yeah. weighs <laughs> 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 112 pounds. But, <sighs> but the thing about her, too, is that my objective is for people to know their swings. So when she plays, she doesn't need me. When she plays, she knows what to do. And so it's, it's anyways. So people come find us, and we hope that they do. We want to revolutionize the traditional teaching. The whole mindfulness thing is, is like just awareness. Fred Shoemaker talks about awareness. I know Fred, good friend. He, he's awesome, um, but he talks about awareness, and that's what this is, is. Is so by doing each of these points slowly and learning them very slowly, you become aware of how it feels, where you are. You become aware of where the club head is. The okay. thing that everyone tells you to keep your eye on the ball, the ball's not moving. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the thing that's moving. But you so, don't want to keep your eye on that. Yeah, we have people watch the club head. Oh. No, you have to watch it. You use every sensory system that you have between the feel, the, the sight. So let me look at where it is. Let me see where it is. Let me know what I'm doing. So it's not necessarily slow. It's like when you teach the kids how to drive a car. Yeah. They have to go up to the stop sign and stop. Look both ways three times. That's an awareness drill. Are there cars coming? Are there cars coming? So you want people to know, where's the club head? Where's my body? Where's the club head? Where's my body? So it's take it to the point. It's like learning a dance step. Let's do point one, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. point two, point three. And pretty soon, then you can put it in the blender, like making margaritas. <laughs> you have to get the parts first. <laughs> then you get the margarita. So we have people then do it in parts. Then we do it in, in medium speed. And then we do it in fast speed. Well, I'm glad that you said that it's uh, very sensory because I know for me, I start with stinks. <laughs> <So> <laughs> That's the smell part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until we make it taste better, right? <laughs> exactly. All right, Kay. Well, again, uh, we got to get you to the next station here, but thank you so much for spending an extra time with me because I really wanted to hear more about this. And I think that this is the type of thing that there are so many golfers that... Uh, who from, you know, a 5 to a, a 25 will benefit from this and they should really go to your website thank you thank you it's so been much. a pleasure it's, i hope we meet again yeah absolutely thanks so much <laughs> thank Kate. you very much good we're first going to do our new brand new grip aren't we Club up here da, da, da. get that little guy back here farther okay so just step in with me here. no other foot right foot first there there set your feet now you're good to go that's the g-cap system okay. do one one two Good. Two and a half. Three. Four. Four. Yes. Yes. But better. And if you all notice, yes, if you all notice.
she didn't have to watch where the ball was. She watched where the club was. Click on the link below to subscribe to our free weekly interviews on the Golf Smarter podcast at golfsmarter.com.